Here's uh, here's Bob in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Great to have you on the EIB Network. Hello. Yeah, uh, regarding the dust-up at the uh, Trump rally uh, in Chicago, um, I think Trump has the far left so off balance that they had to adjust their tactics to really play on his terms, just, just as he did with the media had always kind of set the rules. Trump has got everything kind of reversed where he has the media following him playing by his rules. What I mean by that is uh, for the longest time, the left has had uh, set the political correctness playing field so that wait, 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 just is, wait, wait, just a second, just a second. What is she so damn mad at? What is? Oh, never mind. I'm watching Hillary's acceptance speech list. She looks fit to be tied. I was just. She looked like she was mad. Maybe she caught Bill with Jennifer again. I don't know what, but she looked ticked. I'm sorry to do this to you, Bob. But it, it oh. was just a replay of her acceptance speech last night. She was living. Well, I'm anyway, sorry. You had so to see that. your point. <laughs> your point is that the, well, the 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 people protesting Trump are angry well, the, that he's getting well, away with that, violating political correctness. Well, political correctness was the rule that they had. It was like kryptonite to the Republicans. Uh, Trump is immune to their to that political correctness. I mean, before when a Republican stepped over the political correctness line, the left slapped him down, and the Republican would either have to publicly walk it back. Or worse, apologize. Look, kind of look like a fool. You know, I mean, played by those rules. Romney played by those rules. Even G.W. Bush politely kind of took every sucker punch the left threw at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, Trump, Trump isn't doing that, and he's he's completely blown up the the PC rules. And now the left is trying to all they have left. You know, folks, I think there's something to this. I, uh, Bob, I I I, I, th- I actually think you're on to something here. Uh, but first. Those are not protests at, at Trump rallies. Those the, the thing that happened in Chicago on Friday, those were riots. Can we use the proper term? And it's important because, they're, what do you mean? First Amendment, everybody has the right to show up. Everybody has the right to protest. Maybe so, but you don't have the right to freaking riot. And that's what they were. Riots do not come under the protection of the First Amendment. And those were riots. That's what the left does. And they're, they're, they're called protests to make it look like the time-honored art of dissent is being practiced. And that's what's not, not what's going on. But his point here, I think, Bob, you have struck gold here. Let's put it another way. The Democrats can say anything. Any Democrat, any actor... Any left-wing boob anywhere can make any crass joke, can make any insult whatsoever, and they never get called on it. They can violate political correctness left and right, and they are applauded for it. But Republicans can't. One slip up, and they are gone. One slip up, one violation of PC, and here comes the entire leftist army descending on them to try to wipe them out and destroy them. Trump is immune. Trump can say what he wants. Trump can do what he wants. And it doesn't hurt him. And they are livid because PC, the enforcement of PC, is one of the primary weapons the left uses to keep their opposition chilled, frightened, and silent. You know, Trump said something last night in his... uh, speech from Mar-a-Lago that actually, I hadn't thought about this, but it's true. He, he was going on about all the money, the negative ads. It was kind of funny. He was talking, he was entertaining clients at his skybox down in Doral on Sunday for the final round of his golf championship there. And right before the uh, final shot being made, the, the event being over, Adam Scott won. They break for local commercials. It's two of the worst anti-Trump spots. And he's trying to get his clients not to see it. So he's pointing out, look at that grass. Isn't that the greatest grass you've ever seen at a golf course? Because all these anti-Trump ads are running. But the point he made was, though whether it's true or not, but he says more money has been spent savaging him in negative ads than any other candidate. And he said, folks, I don't understand it. But I go up. I go up in the polls. The negative ads are helping me. I can't explain it. I don't. But he's right. And that ticks them off. You stop and think of the Jeb Pack. They spent all that money on Rubio. They got to Trump late, but it hasn't hurt Trump. That's another one of these age-old tenants that's, that have to be thrown out. Everything the political consultants thought they knew 
has been turned upside down and rendered irrelevant in this campaign. 